On this Go Angling Gear Guide, I'm here with Adam Rasmussen. We just got done fishing late July King Salmon on Lake Michigan. Had a phenomenal time out in the water. Got some really nice fish in the boat. And want to talk about what is, uh, or what was for us, the dominant presentation. And I've seen this play out before. Uh, if you had to fish one presentation on Lake Michigan for King Salmon, I mean, you think about it, there's, there's a copper line, there's lead core, there's, you know, the downrigger and just, you know, straight line back to, mm -hmm. to a bait. Uh, torpedoes, endless ways to present a bait to a king salmon. But if you were to come out here with one presentation, it would be a wire dipsy rod with flasher and fly. So we're going to talk about what it takes to put together one of these flashers and flies and really clean house on some killer king salmon. So down on this end, this was the hot, hot bait for us today. You can see that that uh, fly down there looks a bit like a, a dog's chew toy that's bent through the ringer a little bit. Fish just kept on eating it though. So you were telling me that that's a 50 pound section. 50 of, pound fluoro. Yep. Two feet long, 24 inches. Yep. Number two, treble hook, VMC on this end. Yep. And tell me about the flies. You kind of stick to a pretty tight color selection on the flies. Yeah, um, all Howie flies are made right here in Sturgeon Bay and they are, uh, there's so many different colors, but you're in the right direction if you're on the green end of the spectrum. And you can't go wrong with green. Um, this one's got a... A little blue to the, it, it looks yep, like it. like the mylar, and then it's actually got a rubber skirt mixed in. That's all that's left. They have chewed all the, the mylar off of it. But So in the water, that fly really doesn't do much by itself. So it's got a little fluff to it. You might say that it's got a profile. But behind the flasher, that's where it comes alive. That's where it gives it all its action and also attracts fish. Right, um, so again, polka dots, white, green, you're still kind of playing off that green color spectrum. This is a nine inch flasher? Eight inch. Eight inch flasher. And then above that, you've got a leader going to the snubber. How long is that and uh, how I just, heavy is it? It's 40 pound fluoro. Mm -hmm. I just make it the length of the rod. I reel my dipsy all the way up to the tip, cut it at the butt. That way it's manageable. Uh, so you, can, you can store it. You get more bites if it's longer. Problem is you're already so long that you get a fish and you're trying to net it. We experience that. You get, yeah, you I get let out you down, there and bro. you don't have enough reach sometimes. So Very important here, you can see there's a, an elastic snubber. These fish hit so hard. And uh, remember, we're fishing this on a wire line, so there's very little stretch. That snubber is what keeps those fish from hitting, hooking up, and then just ripping themselves loose right away. So now let's talk about the dipsy itself. Are there different sizes? And of course, there are different settings. So this is the size one Lure Jensen Dipsy Diver. Uh, there's several different sizes. They make a mag that's a little bigger than this, which is great when you have uh, you know, those warm temperatures going down deeper, you can get your dipsies deeper. Um, Primarily you run this size though? I always run a one. Um, you can also mess with rings. There's different size rings on there to make the surface area bigger and also get them deeper. I keep it simple. I just let more line out right. and it gets deeper. So when this is set, right? So right now, this is how a dipsy works. When you've popped this loose, you can retrieve the dipsy easily through the water. Ideally, you've got a fish hooked up and uh, you're able to fight the fish and not the dipsy. Before you deploy it, you tip this back and it snaps into place. There's enough tension there where this digs down into the water column. It pulls the flasher and fly down deep. But there's one more nuance to this yet. You can actually turn it left or right. Correct, there's, so there's actually a weight on here. And they have a number system. So zero would take this dipsy diver straight down. Mm -hmm. If I wasn't running downriggers, I'd run one on a zero, maybe run one on a one and a half, and I could run one on a three sure. and actually run three of them. Because we have downriggers, we run two dipsies on each side. So I run mine at a one and a half setting and a three and a half. So that actually staggers them and you set them for the left side of the boat or the right side of the boat. Yeah, you can't mix up your rods. There is a left side and a <laughs> right side. Bad things happen if you mix them up. So I bet. keep them straight. Um, but yeah, that'll stagger them so they never get tangled. One's gonna run a little deeper than the other one. And three and a half's gonna bring it up higher. One and a half's gonna get that to dive a little deeper. So it's diving down and out. Yep. Um, so when guys will talk, yeah, I'm, I'm running a number one on a setting of three. That's a number one dipsy diver and they've got 
it angled out to the side than a setting of three. It allows you to space those lines out. And for us today, it was that outside uh, dipsy diver that was just money. And it didn't, you know, both sides of the boat yep. were caught three eighty percent of our fish. It was uh, it was nonsense how many bites we had on those versus everything else in the boat. Now there's one more piece to this. It's not a product that is used many places outside of the Great Lakes, at least in, you know, in the Midwest. It is actually a wire line. This is a, I believe it's like a, a stainless steel. Stainless steel, braided line. 40 pound wire. Yep. Uh, just made to cut the water more. Cuts the water more than you can with braid. Um, and a lot of guys will tell you that there's something to do with the sound, the vibration yep. of the wire going through the water. Um, the fish can't tell us if that's right or not, but I can tell you, you, you will echo the same. Uh, you try to do this with braid and you will catch a fraction of the fish. It's, yep, you can run them both at the same time and you will get more bites on wire. At least for me, that's what works. So there's a lot of moving parts here. It's actually fairly simple once you've kind of broke it down. If you're gonna come out here to Lake Michigan to fish king salmon, uh, this is the number one presentation you need to have in your boat come midsummer. This is gonna catch, this will outcatch almost anything else you try to put behind the boat most days. So give it a try. It sounds a little complicated. I promise you it's not. For additional content related to this video, check out these videos. And don't forget to subscribe to In-Depth Outdoors and Gander Outdoors so you'll never miss a new video.